up. Woo! Hot oh, damn, good damn damn, I ain't really talked much. But what's going on, guys? My name is Matt Freeman, and I like to talk a lot today. It's Monday. Last time I saw you was Saturday before our stream while we were down south. And I enjoyed the shit out of yesterday. Don't stream Sunday nights anyways. Now we are here again for another fantastical Matt Freeman stream, which is back home. Mm. Not sure what to do. I, uh, yeah, uh, I'm going to be all yawny, but I'm still tired. Uh, I'm still adjusting. You wouldn't think that I'm going out of town three hours away and I'm getting drunk every night. I'm living off junk food and all that fun stuff would really be that much of a difference for somebody after these two simple days, but Sure, they'd beat me up more than I would. One of the uh, all-around projects that I still have to do. My, uh, my turtles. Um, my turtle, he... Uh, he needs more water than he has. He's fine with, like, with as little water as he has. But at the same time, like, he could very easily use even more water. And I designed this tank for him, so I had very little water and a lot of dirt. Which I admit, when after thoughts of it now, thinking of it being as the fact that it is an aquatic turtle, that he would have obviously required more water than ground that he would want. But as a, as a person who likes to build many ecosystems, I've built a really small water area and a big area had dirt and all kinds of other things in it. Yeah, unfortunately, oh, excuse me, I'm sorry all oh, this decides to kick up now, but so unfortunately, I need to upgrade the space because he only had five gallons of water swimming and I need to give him even more. But, uh, oh, thanks, Joe. This is, this is my, uh, my Ford Taurus seat. I took the Taurus seat out for, uh, Putting my sub into my car when I still own the Taurus, I took the seat out so the sub could go in, and I put the seat out here in the garage, and uh, I have it mounted on a really big box so it's raised off the ground, and then I built this. I mean, like I built it like it was something fancy or anything, but it's just this little channel here, and it's got a speaker that runs my speaker system that's hooked up to my chair. And obviously, as you can see by the other stuff, it's also the place where I pile all my shit. It's like a mini cup holder. But my thoughts are, my fish tank that I'm using is not really the best for a turtle. It's three feet long by a foot wide, which... I mean, I know to a turtle that's only this big around, it would seem as if that would still be adequate space. But I'm thinking long game. Like, if I can set him up with a home that I can just leave him in for years on end because he can grow into it and, and we'll have no issues with being too big for it, at least for, like, a long time, um, I'd totally rather go that route than put him to something he's going to be too big for in like a year or two and I'm going to have to constantly keep building him new enclosures so what I was thinking is still got to remove his enclosure it's in my room but I have these two plastic totes 
We've got one that's in my room that's relatively much smaller. I'm thinking, because here's the thing, if you didn't know, I learned this already throughout the history of Matt Freeman and his redneck designs, because you want to build yourself a really cheap fish tank, but you don't want to go out and spend the money on glass and try to worry about gluing it all together because you're like, there's no way I'm going to get that done right. Plus that can still get expensive. So you start thinking about, well, okay, what's the, the parameters of the goal that need to be met? Okay. It needs to be able to hold water and it needs to be able to be clear so you can see into it. And then what does that lead you to? Obviously. Okay. Well, think about this. A tote or whatever a storage bin tote that you want to call it. It is clear. It, it can hold water. So it's obviously, you know, over time, it, once I thought about totes, I started buying all of these plastic totes because I was like, well, I'm just going to make fancy fish tanks out of them. And it seems so dumb to think of why somebody would go out and spend the money on glass when you could just go out to Home Depot and spend like 10 bucks and get a massive clear tote compared to a big size glass tank. But here's here's the thing you, that I didn't think about from the beginning, which I should have because it makes complete and utter sense, is that this is a plastic tote. It's made of plastic. Plastic is not strong. Glass, strong. Plastic, not strong. Yes, you can fill this up with water and it will hold, but here's the problem. Because of the way the thing is designed, you start filling up with water, the weight of the water starts pushing on the outside, and guess what? There's nothing to stop this. And this will just widen and widen and widen. And so pretty much every single tote you get ends up being way too short on the edges because the sides lean way down because you put way too much water in it. And as much as it does hold the water, it doesn't do a grand fantastic job because the walls are not supported and they're too like they fall apart. So this tote here, I would have to uh, don't my tape measure should somewhere be somewhere. I'm not really sure where it disappeared to, but I'm not a hundred percent sure, but I'm pretty sure that this tote is like an inch or two short of being three feet long but instead of only being a foot wide it's like 17 inches wide so it sacrifices an inch of length and adds a couple inches of width and so if i could build myself a redneck wooden frame because this all realistically needs to happen. It doesn't need to actually be secured to this, but it needs to support the bottom and it needs to support all four walls adequately throughout it. So that way, as the water fills up the inside of this, it doesn't pry the walls apart and end up messing up the tote. Um, like I said, I'm not 100% sure where my uh, tape measure is. I also would like to kind of figure out what the length, overall length of this thing was. I think I said I measured this one, so I don't really remember that. Okay, so this one is 27 inches, so maybe three, oh, it's three feet. That's the, Yeah, so it sacrifices a few inches front and back and adds a few inches to the sides. So it'll be a little bit shorter, but it will be deeper in theory because the other thing is my other fish tank that he's currently in is only 10 inches tall. This is 13 inches tall, so it gives him three extra inches up, which for how small the turtle he is, is actually quite a large difference. Um, but so now what I need to do, I need to work out building a small frame for this guy. Thinking about it being 
I guess I could just move some stuff. I got some. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Just thinking about it now because uh, where I've got the fish tank at now, the tank sits pretty nicely on the box that it's, that it's currently sat on. But if I put that in, I'll have to move a few of that stuff or a few of those things around because it won't be able to. Uh, Um, yeah, I had a, uh, it's really hard to show. And at some point, if Joe, if you're ever over here again, and we're happen to be thinking about it, I will show you the table that I'm currently sitting on. I set the computer on when I record my live streams and shit like that is actually its original purpose was the biggest ecosystem that I could physically build to date. So what, when it was all said and done, I would have had generally about a 250 gallon drums could fit there. They'd be a little bit strangely placed, but it would have been about probably a hundred gallons worth of water. And then say through a square yard of dirt on top, it was all going to be connected through systems and all that stuff. It was a big pain in the butt, but I, I created this this fish tank that's underneath the table. The table is actually that's what the table is is the fish tank that I built, but with a piece of wood blocking the top so stuff can't fall down inside of it, and uh, and and I made it into a table because I didn't I didn't I don't have any plans on doing anything like with this yet. But um. Whilst building this, I ran into many multiple problems of trying to trying to uh, support the sides. I didn't really build a frame to fit the the container itself. I kind of had a frame and then put the container in and then try to build a frame around it. Really didn't work very well. Plus, I added a window, a clear window. It's it's hard, complicated, but obviously, all black totes are cheaper than clear totes. So if you purchase a bunch of black totes, but then you cut sections out of them and put clear plastic in so you can see through them, it makes it visible and henceforth makes it worthy of what I was doing. So I had to cut and glue all that in. And then on top of that, I did the same thing that you were talking about. I, I didn't do it to the extreme, but I used pieces of wood and screwed the screws through the plastic into the wood and then covered everything in glue. But unfortunately, just because of the way that everything moves as like wood settles and creaks and, you know, and temperatures make it change and everything like that, it just twisted the frame enough that it ended up keep tearing those holes. And every single day that I'd fill up my tank and come outside the next morning, it'd be empty all over the floor because somewhere else had torn and moved. What the fuck was that? Huh? What did you do? What'd you do? Did you do that? Something fell on the floor and scared shit out of my dog. And she's looking at me like, the fuck you do that for? So I started yelling at her like she did it. And she's all confused like, I don't know what's going on. So realistically, I need to just build something that allows it to actually hold its shape, but isn't physically connected to the tote. So that way I don't have any worry about leaking. This turtle's cage is in my room. So like, well, it's one thing to have a whole bunch of water, 100 gallons of water leak out into my garage. It's another thing when it's in my room. I'm, I don't know. I'm sure that thing, obviously, this tote here does not do 100 gallons, but I'd say it probably holds 30, probably 30 gallons, which is, would be the exact size of the tank that I'd be replacing. Plus, then it fills up my smaller three foot by one foot 30 gallon tank I have. 
for even another critter because you know why not i keep growing all the animals i have already might as well just keep going i got a dragon one day hopefully i'll get another dragon oh i had two dragons but the one unfortunately passed away within the first week of owning it and uh now i got a, a baby a baby non-native species to ohio turtle that was found in the wild so i am i'm breaking no laws in owning this non-indigenous species but somebody else either had them and let them go or or, or and then they survived out in the wild and they're now populating or it just happened to be a wanderer that somehow made it all the way to Ohio, like many, many states away. But it's just a little baby guy. He's only this big around. And the pellets of food that I'm supposed to feed him, I throw in there and he fucking seems like he's choking on him, trying to swallow him because the pellet of food is damn near the size of his throat. My fear was though, he was such a small little baby he hadn't spent much time in the water they where he was found he was found somewhere not even around any houses it was in the middle of a factory in the middle of nowhere um yeah that'd be that'd be dope because i like he's had his set up now for a little about two weeks now that I've had him and he is finally getting to the point where his water is starting to really turn color from like the fact of it needs changed and being as like like a store-bought aquatic turtle you know you you constantly clean the tank like whenever I bought turtles from fucking Petco it was like once a week i was you know changing out the water in that tank and even at that was still probably a slow rate for that turtle i mean like they're used to living in pet stores and then in a facility in which case their water is, is constantly being cleaned and compared to my water was going a week or so you know and stuff like that but this turtle that i have he's like like i said since he's an outside aquatic turtle he's literally designed like environmentally designed to live in brackish water, which means that he can be in some of the most disgusting infested waters and still be completely fine because he's, he's a turtle. He's an outdoor wild turtle. So seeing his water getting super nasty, I mean, besides the fact that it smells, you know, it's uh it's, it's not like I'm scared of him being in this and too dirty of water, but, I really wish I could find some form of fucking like something you could add to the water or or something like that that I could end up making a, a miniature hydroponic setup that would not only like filter out his bad stuff in his in his water but would make that bad stuff usable for plants because I know that most turtle poop is very acidity and it's not very good for ant or like plant life. And so it makes me wonder if, if there's not something you could like add to it. Like if you added calcium or something, you know, I'm, not, I'm no botanist. I don't fucking know, but it'd be cool to figure something out like that. Cause then I just, you know, I wouldn't grow nothing crazy, but I grow something small in my, in my room, in my house then, you know, and just have his fucking, water being filtered out by the, the plant and making it all uh, eco-friendly all the way around. Yeah, but what's like, what's an acid loving plant? I, I don't know of a single plant, like the only plant I guess I would think of would be like a pine tree due to the fact of they usually drop all their pine needles on the ground and then in return it turns the soil to acid and they're like the only real thing that likes growing in this acidy 
plant life of the forest. But besides that, I don't. Oh, they do now. Hmm. You know, I think I know what I think about it, though. I, I kind of wonder. I when I I started growing all these white, um, these white pine, um, Japanese white pines that I got, and I got ten of them, and I planted them in two a piece per one pot, thinking the they tell you to begin with that the success rate is very low on growing these plants, but if you get them just right, these things will be like amazing and they'll live forever these are the pine trees if you see it like look up um japanese uh landscape and you see these fucking pine trees growing out of rocks on the side of cliffs and stuff these that's it's an it's a japanese white pine they're very very resilient um Oh, that sounds like fun, Joe. I, uh, so I planted all these trees. I planted two per pot thinking like, you know, if at least one fails, at least one would grow then. And most of the, most, I got like, I got at least like five, I'd say five of them. That were, well, let's see, I got two, three, four, five. Yeah, I have five. So I had five out of ten trees actually grow successfully. Um, three of them are really small, and they haven't grown much in a couple of years. But two of them I have are humongous. Like, not really. I mean, just for the the evolution of the fact that I planted these white pine trees like three years ago, and now my tallest one from the base of it to the top of the tree is like this tall. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's cool to watch. It's actually trying to grow little baby branches and, um, you know, it's too small to make pine cones, but they still, uh, they, they grow these little buds at the end of their lead or at their end of their, uh, branches. And it's cool. It's cool to watch little trees grow up slowly, but most of them that grew, surprisingly enough grew after the one died so it's like one would sprout and you would never see the other one sprout and then that one would die and as soon as that one was dead the other one would grow so it's almost like i wonder if the uh first one died due to the low acidity level in the soil but its growth and or death added acid to the soil making for the second one to grow even better not sure because the two that I have that are the tallest are actually in the exact same pot. They both grew and I've been twisting them around each other in a circle. So I've got two pine trees that are growing spiraled around each other and they're actually turning brown now to the point where if uh, like in a year or two, they'll actually have bark on the tree and it will, they will be completely shaped to grow around each other. It'd be cool to, if one thing, just have them both completely grow like normal, but around each other. But secondly, it'd be even cooler if eventually they grow into each other and just become one tree. That's like double the tree because it's me trying crazy bonsai stuff. I like, I like messing with bonsai trees. But hello, Rachel. I really wanted to come get that card from you today because I want to start editing stuff from down south because I had a lot of fun watching the videos that I recorded, let alone all the stuff that I know that you recorded too. Oh, but then this with this weather and Everything it just kind of sl slipped my mind. Now I'm sitting here thinking like, damn. What's up, Holly? Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord, Terry, put it in reverse. 
Let's see, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I have seven cigarettes. And it is too late to go to anywhere because, I mean, Circle K is open, but it's like, I don't really want to drive all the way to Circle K for cigarettes. And uh, the drive through now closes at 9 o'clock due to the stupid Rona. Fucking 11 o'clock on weekdays and 1 o'clock on weekends is what their normal hours are. And now it's 9 o'clock every night. It's like, you're killing me, dude. It's 9.30 and I'm like, oh, I want to go have cigarettes. And now I got to drive halfway across town just to go get a goddamn pack of cigarettes because everything closes early now. It's like, what the fuck? My cigarette addiction is way more important than the stupid Rona that's going around, and you should sell cigarettes to me at any time of the hour. Uh, yes, we did have a lot of fun down south. We did. We did a lot. But see, here's even the thing is like we didn't record nearly as much as we would have hoped and thought that we were going to record, but. It's the first time that I've been down there in two years. So as much as I wanted to record a lot of cool stuff, I also just wanted to have fun more than anything because it's been so long since I just went down there and had fun. So definitely recorded stuff, just not nearly as action packed as we would have thought it would have been just because we had so many ideas of different things we wanted to do and record. But instead we realistically, we just rode and had a good time. Um, because you know and then we took what videos and pictures we could along the way so i figured that i probably have enough i see that's i don't know i might i might have enough content to make a two-part video but doubtfully it's going to be any i'm going to have to voice over at some point some part of it because there's going to be there's going to be more content that has, doesn't have talking in it than there's going to be the content that has talking in it so um well, I don't know. We'll figure that out as it gets to it, but it's still just cool watching. I pulled my GoPro out, got the videos off of it, pulled my other camera out, got all the cam pictures, um, videos off of it, took my phone, took all the videos from it, stockpile them all in my spot for the editing file of my computer, and then I just went through and watched all of them. It was like, it's so funny how it's only been literally 24 hours since we've been away from it. I already was like, man, I wish we could have been there for like a week. Just have so much fun. You know, we couldn't drink every night, you know, fucking killed us really to do two nights in a row. And I'm the one that got probably the drunkest on Saturday, but to the point of, uh, So much, it's only too much that you can do. Two days in a row of getting drunk, doable, but it's a struggle. But any more than that, and I'm not, I'm not sure my body could have kept up with that. Well, that's why I actually I kept thinking that this weekend, like not this upcoming weekend, but the weekend we did go down south, I was thinking that that was Memorial Day because I knew Memorial Day was coming up. I didn't remember what when it was. I knew it was coming up and that we were going down south around the same time. So I just naturally assumed we were going on Memorial Day weekend because I was like, well, that, then we do have three days. Because um, my mom asked me what day we're coming back. And I said, Monday. And she goes, why would, why would you be back on Monday? Doesn't Mike and Rachel have to work? And I was like, no, it's Memorial Day. And she's like, that's next weekend. And I was like, oh, <laughs> my, my days are so screwed up anymore in life. So definitely would have been cool to even have that one extra day would have been would have been cool. Cause then we could have even in that top of that, we could have fucking not drink on Saturday and then we could have drank on Sunday night. Yeah, man. I will absolutely do that because I would like to see what all craziness that you have actually set up especially the fact you've got fish and all kinds of awesomeness inside of yours so i will definitely let you know tomorrow joe but good night
still also trying to uh, get my throat back to normal since it still burns and itches from the fact that I smoked like 50 cigarettes in two days. Destroyed my lungs or any form of lung that I had possibly left anymore. Unfortunately, the other worst part, which like Mike was saying, and more than likely came from pulling out the weeds Thursday night than it was down south, but my arms are covered in poison ivy. Like they're not like covered, covered, but I've got, I'd say, Probably 10 to 12 different spots where I've got poison ivy all over my arm. It sucks. I mean, being as it's definitely not my first rodeo with poison ivy, it's just one of those mental mind fuck games where you got to spend thinking about the fact that you can't hit yourself. But my ankles are actually getting really itchy. They've been getting itchier as time's going on, but they're not bumpy. So I'm thinking that it's probably not more, but who knows? Who knows? Your boy could have it all over himself for all he knows. Good old poison ivy, you know. Nothing but a G thing. So I named this stream, and I, I spelled cocaine wrong. And I looked it up and realized I was missing the I in cocaine. And I was like, I seriously wonder if there is some person somewhere in life that straight up has to, like, go through people's internet searches. Because I'm sure mine comes up crazy. Like, what, I don't even know. Is there, like, a way I can see what my list of things I've looked up? Yeah. <clears throat> so I've got the weather, and I looked up what 11 sixteenths to millimeters is. And then I, I looked up what cocaine was. So it's like, I'm sure that they're just like, okay, this guy wants to know weather. Okay, he's he's working on something. He needs to convert. 11 sixteenths into millimeters and now he's looking up cocaine but it's because I couldn't figure out how to spell it how do you tell the difference between poison ivy and poison oak all I, all, the only reason I know that I have anything is because I've got these big old red bumps popping up everywhere that are itchier than shit that's why I'm actually wearing a sweatshirt at the moment is because I was catching myself earlier itching my arms. And I was like, no, 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 no. You're going to put this sweatshirt on so you'd stop itching because it's one great way of making it real worse. Just scratch yourself till you pop it open and then spread it all over the rest of your arm and watch as the whole rest of your arm and get some effect. But... Oh. Oh. Well, is, is poison oak just do the same thing poison ivy does? I figured. I mean, I haven't been in. I haven't been through fields in years on end. And I mean, even though I wore jeans every single day, and my arms and everything were exposed from my shirt, so it's like I really don't. Not like, oh man, I'm so mad. It's just one of those things where I mean, I expected poison ivy was going to be a factor, but now that I have it, it's not really like a oh man. It's just like a. Uh, it happens. It happens, even though we wish it didn't. It does. Just like I had no no ticks on my body, but yet then, like in while we were standing there down south, I had that one that was on my jacket. So it's like, you know, I look out and never get them to fuck with me on a, on a level which they're actually on me, fucking me over, but 
still in my life enough where I see them, and that's like, and this is why we try to remember what ticks are. Because they are a bitch. So what is there to talk about? So I need to, I was thinking earlier when I was thinking about the fact of, okay, well, nine o'clock's coming. I'm going to have to uh, stream soon. I thought to myself, I'm like, you know, like, how am I going to keep coming up with stuff to talk about every single night if you never really think about anything? Like, so Sunday was my day off. So I could talk about stuff that went down on Sunday, but Sunday also was down south most of the day. So it, I don't want to talk about really too much of what we did on Sunday because the video will be coming out. And I would rather everybody see what we did throughout through the videos than what me trying to explain how awesome it was. Um, so that eliminates half of yesterday. And then you have last night where I got home. Uh, excuse me. I got home and I was dead tired and I played with my dog because she was beyond excited. That was something I could talk about because didn't record it, but I well, I knew my puppy was tied up in the, in the backyard, so I I walked around from the front yard into the backyard before I went inside when I got home. And so she saw me, she started crying while sitting there. You could tell it was a happy cry. Like she was super excited to see me. And then when I got up to her, she kept jumping up on me and kissing the shit out of my face. Obviously just proved to me 100% that my dog did absolutely miss me after two days, which is good because I missed her. And I would have been quite upset if I got home. My dog was just like, ah, what's up? And I was like, oh, cool, cool. You were happy. Until I got here. Now you're just like, oh, okay, I guess this guy's back. But no, she was she was ecstatic to, to see me home. So that's that was good. But I did a lot of nothing. I'm gonna watch the YouTube. I uh, sorry I keep yachting. I uh, sorry I keep yachting. I'm so I slept like complete shit last night because my my body is now like set to a different time because I was up really late when I was down south. I'm trying to actually go to bed early get up earlier well then i'm laying in bed all night last night doing absolutely nothing because i can't fall asleep i went to bed at 12 o'clock which is the earliest i've been i tried to go to bed in a long time and i just laid there and stared at the ceiling for a lot of hours until finally my body was like i guess we can fall asleep now and it wasn't too many hours later and the fucking alarm clock was going off waking my ass back up so i was like god damn I'm literally just so freaking tired right now. I feel like I'm running out of energy. And I'm, I'm also running out of pop. I've only got three pops left in my name. And that was three pops after the pop that I just finished a sec, or say a second ago, but it's been a few minutes ago now. But so it's not like I can just run inside and grab another one without being like, damn it. Now I only have two left, and so on and so forth. So I need to try to go as long as I can without drinking on the pop beverages till I can acquire me some more soda pap. And then I woke up this morning, and then I came outside, and it wasn't raining, so I got my dog out, and I let her play outside for the first, like, four hours, and then it's rained all fucking day since. So my dog inside her cage all day since, which means son of a bitch. Um, she is, let's see her. You can hardly see her right there. She's actually sleeping. That's, that's her head right there. Okay, right there, right there. It's her face, her mouth right there, and that's her ears back there. And then she's laying this way. And she's got her little feeties going off like here and here. She's so adorable. She's sleeping, sleeping at the moment. So I'm not going to bother her too much because she is a bit cranky today. 
No, I'm not talking about you. You keep sleeping. But besides those few small things, not much has changed my life. And besides the fact of, like I said, all I've done pretty much is watch YouTube. So here I am sitting myself down, talking to a computer for the next two hours with like zero percent of anything to be able to talk about. And so I was thinking, I was like, you know what you should do? You should get a little document in your phone and just every single day should be my physical, like, thought process to be like, think of at least five things to talk about. Just so that way, when stream comes and you hit one of those moments where you're like, now what? What's there to talk about? I would have something to direct me in more of a path to have something to talk about. Because now we just get to the point where obviously there's some days I have things to talk about. Some days like today where it's just like, I'm not really sure what to talk about. Um, how do you know it's not poison oak? Do you have a, a poison oak tester or something? why originally I was going to try to build some stuff. Um, now it's getting close to 10, but let's try and build this thing for my turtle. And You know, if I could reach over into my wood pile and pull out perfect lengths of wood that were all of the exact same length and the length that I need to build the thing I need to build, then that'd be great. But the problem is it doesn't work that way. And there's eventually going to be pieces of wood that aren't the same length, which means I'm going to have to cut one to make the other one the same length. Being as it's loud, I'm going to have to use a handsaw. And whereas I can use a handsaw, I'm completely capable of doing it. And I still do to this day use a handsaw quite often. And I'm not talking like a power saw. I mean like a <laughs> handsaw. Um, I probably have to do a lot of hand sawing and I don't really feel like, like cutting wood. It's a lot of effort. So it pretty much comes down to if I don't do that now and instead can save that for tomorrow during the day and I can use a power saw to cut the wood, in which case then I don't have to worry about. Um, Physical energy. Oh, yeah. I don't. I don't really know one hundred percent the difference between the two. I just know they both make you itchy really bad. Yeah, it is it's one of them days. It's it's because it's rainy in Ohio and there's there's nothing much to do and. Plus, I guess the other good thing is, at least now I have more of an idea of, of, uh, of stuff, content that can be easily created and or recorded down south. Because now seeing the landscape again after a couple of years and understanding what what's readily available with you know, a four-wheeler that can't go through anything and then yet a four-wheeler that can't get it can't not go through anything a three-wheeler that fucking went on like a 10-mile ride and ran perfectly fine afterwards two-stroke dirt bike that worked really really good and then a pit bike that also ran perfectly fine carried my non-existent fat butt up a hill. But I want to do something. Okay, 
feel like I could be productive. And when I have these feelings, I should be productive because it's a good feeling to have, like to be like, I want to do something. I want to accomplish something. I want to be able to do whatever it is I do. And at the end of it, be like, yeah, I feel great because I did this. And, and I'm in one of those moods, but for some reason, you know, there's like a billion kajillion projects that I've ever saved or have laying around that easily could be like, oh, I could do this with this or you know, whatever the fucking case be. And, uh, and I don't do them. Like, for instance, I have, uh, I have a whole bunch of drills, old drills that are taking up space pretty much. Like, for instance, let me show you this one drill. No, you ain't doing that. All right, this drill. Let me introduce you to the twenty dollar. Actually, I think it might have been a smidgen more than that. But let's say twenty five dollar hyper tough twenty volt max lithium screwdriver, or I mean drill. You saw it work right there, right? Here's the thing. This was from Walmart. I wanted a drill. This is a couple of years ago. I wanted a drill really bad. I I wasn't trying to go out there and spend, you know, fucking hundreds of dollars to get a fucking drill when I was like, I'm sure I could very easily get a cheap drill and have it work just the same. So I purchased this drill. Um, it's a one and a half amp hour, 20 volt max lithium, hyper tough, whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it came with the drill. It came with the battery. It actually came with two batteries a flashlight and the charger. The charger was super cheap, right? Like, I mean, the whole thing's super cheap, but of all of it, the charger was the cheapest. Instead of it being like a physical docking pad that you sit yours on, like I have for my rigids, my actual nice drills, where you slide them into a dock that sits there, it was a dock in which the battery was the dock and you took this thing you slid it over top of it and it just had a little wire coming off of it and it charged your battery well after like a couple months of using this <clears throat> um drill all the time i uh i broke the charger i had no idea how it worked but it somehow it broke itself so no matter what every time i stuck it onto one of my batteries and plugged into the wall it didn't charge it just refused to work it was broken and so I used this drill for like a month and on all of my projects because this battery is dead. Okay. But watch this. See that motion that it just did right there. That is a very torquey amount of spin. And it does it every time you hit the trigger, no matter what, with the battery being really low, you just constantly keep pressing this trigger or constantly torquishly unwind itself. So I got an idea in my head and I said, hey, what if I use this thing anyways? So um, for like a month, I used a completely dead drill and just slowly drilled the hole. I would just go a little bit, 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 little bit, little bit for everything I did. And you might be like, that seems like a ridiculously long time to do something. And you're right. It was, but it was all I had. So I tried to make it last as long as I could. And the problem was, is I wanted to get another drill. And I wanted something that was actually nice. So I ended up getting a really nice set of drills. And, you know, unless I went out and bought the new charger for this thing, which is like 10 or 15 bucks, which in that case, I might as well just go out and buy a whole brand new set of these because they are already extremely cheap tools to begin with. And uh, so I threw the charger away, but I kept the drill because I was like, well, it's still a perfectly good working drill. It just, um, it just doesn't work, which is obviously the point. So the main focus of what I wanted to keep it was I want to keep the battery. I want to open this battery up and I want to see 
what this battery is made out of because I could definitely technically steal this battery and the charging system and hook it up into something different and build like the Bluetooth speaker I've been thinking about building. I could use this to power it instead of having to carry around some massive, massive battery. Um, and on top of that, that then leaves a drill that still works perfectly fine, but doesn't have a battery anymore. So there's no point in keeping the drill. So I also will take the drill apart and keep the motor and um, whatever electronicals are inside that I can keep because obviously, as I've explained before, any motor that's run off of a battery can be used to produce power. So if this spins in one direction, it's because it's using the motor, you take the, or you take, take using the battery, you take the battery out and you start spinning the top of it in the reverse motion and it ends up generating power with the motor and, and, and giving you a charge. So realistically, this right here, just in of itself, in the plastics and everything, when you remove the battery from it and then it loses all of its purpose, it then transforms itself into a hand cranked power generator, which you can literally just put a handle in here and crank this and it will create power. But obviously it's only going to create power for as long as you crank the handle for. Um, so being as this is a 20 volt motor that runs inside this drill, this drill being cranked, if cranked to a specific speed, um, would actually provide you with 20 volts of power. Isn't it crazy how that stuff works? Oh, but the problem is, is I need to get to the batteries themselves. I need to see what the cell of the battery is because my thought process on this is it's probably more than likely just a bunch of cells all set up to run in like a series category, in which case that way they all amplify each other. And so they're probably a bunch of really small cells built together to make one big cell that runs at 20 volts. But I need 12 volts to run the speaker system that I have that I, if I wanted to try to build a, it wouldn't even be considered a Bluetooth system. It'd just be a speaker system that is portable, but it's, but it's actually like a booming system. Um, it runs on 12 volts. So I would need at least 12 volts. And obviously with this being 20, that's more than it needs, but I could take, the adequate amount of batteries I need off of this guy creating. So it's only giving 12 volts instead of the 20. And then instead of just removing those extra battery cells, I can hook those battery cells up and parallel gigs instead of 20 volts. So you see what I'm doing here? I'm just completely destroying what some engineer built. And they were like, we're going to build this high performance battery for these really cheap drills at Walmart. So that way, one day, a, a, no, a, a, a non-engineered student, because, well, I'm not a student at all, but I mean, just meaning like a person who's never taken engineering before in his life. And just from the knowledge that he's learned throughout life experiences slash watching other people do similar stuff with things in, on YouTube, is now going to attempt to deconstruct the battery in the hopes to use it for a, a secondary project. But here's the thing. This works. I have one, two, I think three total of more batteries, different batteries, different companies, different voltages, but all the same in the sense of if I can take this part and do what I'm thinking about wanting to do with just this one, and I'll absolute, absolutely be able to do it with the other ones as well, in which case I'll be able to build a magnificent, massive battery pack cell. And instead of incorporating it with the speaker system, I will then be able to carry the cell separately and have it so not only when I'm out recording stuff on my camera or using my phones, I can charge my phones and stuff off of that. You could also then hook the speaker system into it and run 
about that as well. I'm just daydreaming over here about what I'm doing once I finish this. Oops. Well, definitely not putting it together because we're back together because I just took it apart. And unfortunately, as I picked it up, it something that was not secured to the top piece fell out. And I'm not sure where it was, where, what, what it was or where it was. So it's gone now. I don't know. By the looks of it, it looks like it was just a click button system. It's missing because it's not in this bottom piece, but it's what we're left with. And guess what this shows us, okay? Okay, you see this motherboard here? Motherboard runs it all, obviously. So here's where the power is connected to the where the charger comes in and it tells it, okay, you're going to take in the power. You're going to do this. You're going to equally provide this amount of voltage to each cell, blah, blah, blah. You see this right here? It looks like a small individual battery. This is the cell. This is what I was talking about. By the looks of it, there are four of them in a row. So now we have to figure out how much power is in one cell, which should be told on the thing itself. But I also think it's slightly covered up. It says, I see 500 milliamp hours, but the battery should be way more than that. Um, Yeah, just to, it just says the, the number of the battery, the lithium ion, and it gives the date code, and then it has other numbers to the left, but I can't see it because it's blocked by this piece of plastic. But, but hello, Michael, and hello, Golden Rambo. I'm not trying to ignore you guys. I am just getting into working on something at the moment, so my brain's trying to explain to you slash, you know, completely understand what I'm looking at myself. So by the looks of it, this board would definitely would still have to stay here. I think, I'm not sure. So if I could get them out, I just don't wanna, see initially when I, when I myself take things apart, I take them apart. I do exactly as what I say. I just start ripping things apart, which is fine. It works it, when you need it to. But sometimes, like in this case, where there's a very good chance, I don't know how much of a chance this is, but there's a very good chance that I could use this as it is without having to destroy it. Because this and its plastic built case and everything like that has four screw holes there for where the top would have covered. I won't put the top back on because I'll need access to these wire connectors and the connectors I put on probably won't be the same as what the old ones were and they probably won't fit. But um, I could then just set this somewhere in, in a custom made little wooden box and build my own little power supply but it runs at 20 volts. So I would need to figure out how to knock it down. Because obviously phones run at five volts. When you put 20 volts to a five volt phone and your phone will cease to exist. Well, I mean, it will exist. It just will get really hot, may catch on fire and definitely will not be working again. And I have step downs, which a step down literally does exactly what it, what it makes it sound like. It's a step down in voltage. So it takes some from 20 volts and it will step it down to 10 volts or five volts or whatever voltage you're going for. But the ones I have take it from 12 volts to five volts. And this, this is 20. And so you couldn't hook that up to this because it just blow the circuit because it was only supposed to be provided with 12 volts and instead now it's being provided with 20 it would just fry that circuit right off the bat so my thought at the moment is simply that there may be a slight possibility that this inside black piece and this outside black piece might be two separate um Oh, yes, I think it is true. Okay, cool. 
I was going to say they may be two separate entities. If that be the case, which it is, it makes it 10 times better because now I don't have to worry about ruining the outside shell on top of it. Now I'm left with this, which is the actual built battery pack with the motherboard on top. Um, <clears throat> see if I got any better angles on any of these batteries to be able to read them, but by the looks of it, they were not placed in there in a nice enough level to be like, hey, maybe one day somebody will try to read this and, and then they'll be able to know because the information is not visible. So by the looks of it, though, got a little piece of like tape like shit on the outside. I'm, un I'm unengineering something that another engineer made. And that's what I think is so funny is like somebody built this, like, oh, we'll do this, this, and this. This will make this stronger and this will help with this. And now here I am, not as a real true professional engineer, like I didn't go to school or anything, but I'm using the engineering part of my brain to deconstruct the item that the engineer made and try to figure out why everything is there and what, what, that being there, how does that help this? And so on and so forth. So it's always an interesting task to take upon yourself as to uh, I'm assuming, I don't know, but I'm assuming that by the way that these things are set up, that um, They probably got sound welded on. If they were sound one, they got these things. It's called a hypersonic weld. I only knew of it because we did it at our plastic shop, but I learned throughout the years that they do the same thing with metal when it comes to batteries. So, like, you can't physically to solder and solder a piece of wire to a battery because obviously that's going to get hot and batteries and heat don't go well together. So, it's just a all-around thought process. They had to try to think of some way that they could get a piece of wire to stick to a piece of metal and that would require as least amount of heat as possible. So... Like I said, they already used it in other parts of it, so it's not like they invented the entire thing, but they came up with hypersonic welding. And what it does is it takes a really small piece of metal. And these metal clips that you see here, right there, and some of them got this sticker on it, but this one's clear. You can see that tab right there comes from the motherboard right here, runs down here, and turns to this metal tab. Both of these ends here are both like hypersonic welded, to the battery itself. So how they do that, they take the battery, probably in this pack, but they take the batteries and they put that little clip in place so it sits exactly where it's supposed to. And then this little machine with these tiny two little fingers come across, they make contact with that, and then it vibrates while pushing a lot of pressure on that battery. And due to the vibrations um, of the machine, and the pressure applied to it, it welds the little metal tab to the battery. It does get hot, but it doesn't get hot near enough, hot enough to like actually cause an issue with the battery. And that's how all these get welded on there. And you can actually tell because you can see the little dots on the plates. Those little dots that are on those little fingers of each one of those batteries, that's where the machine touched it to supersonic weld it. That's where the little thing went, dink, and went, ee! And then and welded it together. Now that being the case, you ain't getting it apart. If it comes apart, it usually is gonna rip at some point in the middle. Um, it's welded. It's it's not like a oh, this is as good as glue kind of fix. This is like a it's welded to the battery and you're not getting it off the fix. So if I want to remove one of these, I'm gonna have to unsolder it from this way from up here from the board and slide this thing out because that is not coming off. Um, but also that being the case by the looks of it, the battery pack will not be removed from 
like the plastic bits of this pack won't be able to be removed from the batteries because of the fact that these little metal tabs that they wire they uh they welded onto the sides of the batteries are over top of the plastic so i'd either have to ruin all the tabs and unfortunately the metal that they use to weld to batteries has to be conductive but it also has to be a metal that's good with being able to be like vibratingly welded to something and i'm not 100 percent sure as to what it is that they use but whatever it is it doesn't work well with a solder so the solder that's on this board that has them soldered into the motherboard i'm sure is a very specifically special solder that's meant to work with this very specific metal because that's why they sell like 30 different kinds of solders if you ever go out to buy some solder you're going to try to solder a cable together you stand in the solder section and you realize that there's 12,000 different solders out there and you're like why would there be that many and it's because there's all kinds of wires out there all all these wires in the world that are made of very specific compounds and materials and they have to make solders that fit all those so you can actually solder the right stuff and so the chances that i have the right solder to solder this stuff is very small being as i've tried soldering to one of these before and it hasn't worked in the past Plus, like I said, then you're also running the risk of when you're trying to solder to this piece of metal, it is running to the battery. And the whole point of the company skipping the soldering phase is because solders get really hot and heat and batteries don't go well together. So we're stuck, pretty much. So this comes down to, I got, there's two sets of wires that come off, but one of them is called RT1 and one of them is called RT2. One go. One of them looks like it goes into the battery, like the battery itself, right at the end here. And the other one tucks up underneath the motherboard. I get, yeah, no, see, and the problem is to do any form of work to this, to even get this motherboard to come off. Not only do I have one, two, three, four, five, six little plastic posts that are holding the motherboard down, so I'd have to pry this thing off. I'd have to unsolder every single piece of wire on here because then the wires are going to hold it down. Being as I don't even know 100% what all this is or how it's set up to do what, the last thing I'm trying to do is tear it all apart to then realize, like, oh, I could have used it the way it was and wouldn't have had to even touch it. But here we are. The only thing that definitely would be helpful is the top of this plastic piece that this came out of um, sits on it like this and the only reason that it's helpful to, to know this is because the metal clips that are on the top side it tells me that the positive is the far left one and the negative is the far right one but then they have this weird symbol next to this other one and i have no idea um you can see that little symbol there in the middle kind of looks like an upside down t not sure what that symbol stands for so it'd be probably something that i don't i'm not saying i do because i have no actual idea but there's a slight possibility i may be able to find the owner's manual for this drill in which if that was the case that would be the smart idea to then go out of your way and look up the manual and figure out what that symbol means because obviously it means something. And if you're trying to build something that uses batteries and stuff like that and you have a system that's set up that you have a plug that you don't even understand what it does, you should probably look it up before you hook up something wrong or you hook up something where you had to bypass something to be able to get something else to work and then find out that that plug you didn't look at did that exact same thing. Uh, excuse me. Um, here's the other battery I have. It's a 14.4 volts. It's a Craftsman battery. I had a whole bunch of Craftsman's tools that came with it, but the problem is, is 
these batteries are old and shot, so I need brand new batteries for the the setup. Um, it came with a drill, a flashlight, uh, um, a circular saw, and something else. I forget what the other one was. And the drill worked okay, but now I have like a really fancy, nice drill set. So that makes really no sense to keep these crappy old drills. So again, the drill could be taken apart. The batteries can be repurposed. The batteries don't last near as long as they did. They would charge up all the way and still give you the 14.4 volts, but they wouldn't last near as long. So both of these batteries, if hooked together with that battery set, would last a lot longer. I was picking this up to take it apart, but unfortunately, while just about to explain all this to you, I looked down on the top and the top of it takes star bit screws to take out. And unfortunately, I do not believe I have any star bits available that I could use. I, if I do, there's, they're being a set here. Will you lay down, I'm not getting you up. Do you see these? Do you see these? I'm doing stuff. We have the screw bit set I got from my grandfather when he passed away. He just opened it recently. It's got a few of them in it, but I'm not going to be sure on that. So initially, I was going to say I won't be able to take this thing apart because I don't have the correct screw for it. But we may just look out. And I might have actually ended up having one in the in the long run. But of course, as I do almost on a daily basis, and this is funny because this just happened for, for you guys. Now, you may have seen where I did with it. I might have done it on camera enough where you saw it. So you under, you know where I'm, what I'm looking here. This is helpful. Anyways, what I was saying is a lot of times what I do is I get to working on something or I'm moving around, I'm doing something. and I set something down somewhere while I'm working on it to go grab something or to set it over here until I need, need actually need, need it and blah, blah, blah. And then I set down the floor and well, that time I set down the floor and then all of a sudden I'm like, wait, what did I do with that? And I can't remember. And then I'm spending all this time running around like a chicken with its head cut off, looking around for something that I clearly just had, but for some reason, I have no idea where I did with it. So I go through that kind of feelings a lot, but usually they're rarely caught on camera. But that right there was one of those moments of I placed it somewhere. Obviously, I had just placed it on the floor while I reached down into the toolbox to grab the screwdriver. And just from setting it next to me and standing up, I forgot that I placed it next to me. So these are star bits, and by the looks of it, I did have one that fit, which really surprised me because it was the smallest one that I had. So literally, if this these screws were just a smidgen smaller, or yeah, smidgen smaller in size, which I'm not sure if they are, this might be the smallest bit they make. But regardless, I would not have had the right screwdriver for this. So. Now we painfully have to take these long ass plastic screws out. These ones are a bit longer than the last ones were, but uh, this is a pain. But there's five of them in total. Fortunately, being as they are just little tapping screw tapper screws inside of plastic, they weren't like actually anything that they really truly expected to stay. Probably didn't expect either A, me to be the one that's taking it apart for the purpose in which I'm taking it apart, but um, they also aren't like, they're not like the hardest things in the world. The problem is, and I don't know 100% on this, but either A, this bit that I have is just a smidgen small. It fits, but at the same time, it still has the ability to slip, and that doesn't seem right for one, but for two, I think this has just got so much dirt and dust and crap inside of it that it's actually keeping the, the 
a bit from going in and actually making a good connection because that first one just screwed right out and every single one of these is being real difficult so this is one of those things where if, you know we were doing this video and and i was like hey guys watch me do this stuff and i'm gonna edit it down and make a video out of it for you guys then you wouldn't see none of this because i would just edit all this out all this bullshit work of having to fight this little screw to come out because it's not working at all now it's just not rotating i don't get what's going on wait there it is once it gets up a certain amount i can get it with my hand but instead it's a live stream and that means you're sitting here watching me do this live which means that for the two hours of work that i do you're like, okay, I watched him for 30 minutes sit there and talk. And then after 30 minutes, he started working on a project that he was been wanting to work on for a while now, or technically he had been working on for a while, but until he ran into the needing batteries problem. Then he gets a smart idea of using old drill batteries, and he spent two hours just taking drill batteries apart because a non-edited video just shows you exactly how much bullcrap can be cut out of a video that you wouldn't even think of like oh yeah that's true just because you watch a two-hour video or you watch a 10-minute video that's been edited down to be like hey look i did this cool stuff to build this awesome thing doesn't mean that it just took me 10 minutes to say hey cool look i can do this and then i did it it still takes me hours on end to do all the work it's just, it's just erased and put into such a tiny video that you don't get to see the glory in this of having to actually physically do the work, which as the more you take things apart, the more you understand them, the more you understand what you need to do to make the next one even better and easier. Okay, here we go with this setup. This is an interesting one, ladies and gentlemen. This is exactly just this big case, the top piece, and the batteries. Doesn't even have a battery case for the for the batteries as you can see the batteries are connected up they're soldered or they're uh, um they're, they're welded together just like the other ones um there is a few batteries that show corrosion on them which i mean it's not a big surprise these are batteries that are fuck i don't even know if this case is going to have an age on it but i'm sure that this drill sets probably from early 2000s so these batteries are about 20 years old at this point you know so it's really not too surprising to, to think the, that they're uh, that they're getting a little bit corroded nowadays uh, they're not even like glued in place they're all completely separate as if you start bending them in the correct pattern so this one and this top one are connected and it's connected to this one it's down here and so then you start prying that one up well okay well this one's connected up top to this one over here so now these cells are separating it's literally just a clump together metal bent fest but uh these are 1500 mega amp hour batteries which make me think that these are the exact same as those but there's four of those um same amp hourage but different voltage uh, now the let's see i could i should have one two three four 12 battery packs in this or 12 battery cells in this one battery pack so 14.4 divided by 12 and obviously you're going to get one but it's going to be one and some change and that's the those are the numbers we need so let's go with 14.4 divided by 12 1.2 so in theory every single one of those battery cells is a 1.2 volt battery they're all connected in series and because of that it makes it to the point where it's producing 14.4 volts you know, that's the other thing that a lot of people don't realize is that you realistically, you can hook up enough AA batteries to run a 12-volt battery or to run something that runs on 12 volts. 
you hook them all up in series, if you hook a whole bunch of AA batteries up in series, you can make 12 volts. But the problem is, is the battery itself is only designed to run for a specific amount of time. So I don't know, but just say uh, AA batteries, I'm even trying, I'm, I'm guessing out my ass, but say it has a 150 amp hour lifespan, which is not very long at all. But for like something in the sense of you put a AA battery, like for instance, the clock that's now hanging on my wall back there runs on one AA battery. The thing will probably last for a year, if not more. And it's because it's run, the clock takes next to no power to use. It's all mechanically set up. So once you get the first rotation going, it sets motion all the other mechanical year, gears to spin. So you know, one double A battery lasts for a year and a half, say, and you know, and this is just a small battery, but it's barely running anything. Running a radio run is using next to no power. So you put two double A batteries in the radio, you leave the radio on all night, and it probably is gonna play for like say 18 hours before it dies. And it's running a speaker and the motherboard and, and a thing that's acquiring a signal. You know, so I mean like it double A batteries have a lot of power to them, but Obviously, if you're running something that runs 12 volts, it's going to require 12 volts constantly for a long period of time. And if you hook up 12 volts worth of AA batteries in series, they're only going to supply you with 12 volts for like a mere 30 seconds. And then that's even that could even be long. I mean, they might provide you 12 volts for 15 seconds or 10 seconds before you know, you hook something 12 volt radio up to it and it's just going to instantly die because it's not going to be able to find 12 volts for a very long time. Um, so it's very doable with like creating your own battery packs. If you go out and buy like, you know, I can say a hundred double A batteries and you hook them all up in series, but on top to give you, you know, specific voltage but then on top of that you tape those all together so it creates one big parallel series hooked up on the thing and you could have double a batteries charge your phone for 12 days straight before the batteries would even be dead but just the mere fact that unless you use rechargeable double a batteries then is it even worth it to use them all and then after it's done then you just wasted the 100 double a batteries that can never be used again and then if they are rechargeable, then you're on top of building one, you need to be able to build a charging system for them because if just because they run on 12 volts doesn't mean that they're going to be able to be charged off of 12 volts. So batteries and electronics are so complicated until you know them and you understand them. That's why I can, for hours on end, and it always ends up being, I don't know what to talk about, and then I come on stream and talk to you for an hour and a half about electronics is because I know an awful lot about electronics to, to general knowledge. And on top of that, the more you take shit apart, the more you learn. 95% of things that I lose throughout my life that are electronics, if I don't break them, I take them apart and it destroys them because I think that I'm going to make something better with them and I never do. So inevitably, I've learned a whole lot about how take how you take things apart. And there's very few things that I've actually truly ever taken apart and rebuilt and put back together and had it work. So it's like when I do it, it's pretty awesome. But <clears throat> uh, but because of all that knowledge and all that time I've spent breaking all my beloved items by taking them apart, I've naturally learned what things do and how they work and how this does this and how why you would want this to have this there and do this and, and this and all this other crap you know like you learn through taking apart what everything is and why it was hooked up there and what it this does because it's hooked up there and all the other stuff to the point that then finally when you finally do break down and say okay look i'm actually going to build something that not only isn't wasted it's actually usable again and you take things apart to build whatever that is that you want to build that's going to be usable again. And as you're building it, you're like, wow, look at this. I have all this stuff that's actually nice and works well because I didn't destroy it when I took it apart. <clears throat> so I can actually reuse it. But 
stream's probably going to be a little bit short tonight. I'm tired. I don't want to sit out outside tonight and smoke all my cigarettes again um, before I can get up and, and get to the gas station or to the drive through tomorrow to purchase more cigarettes. I'm not ending it now. I'm just allowing you to understand that it's going to be just a smidgen shorter of a stream this evening, probably by 30, 20 to 30 minutes. Um, but whilst smoking a cigarette and this in the mere sense of wanting to try to get something else done while we are just sitting here able to talk, I guess I could maybe try to look at figuring out what um, or how, how exactly the rest of this drill comes apart by the looks of it. There are some side screws, but then there are some on the centerpiece here as well that I may not be able to get to because my screwdriver is very fat, very fat screwdriver. Oh, actually, nope, I'm, I lied. It's, it's actually, it's a, it is a very fat screwdriver, but it's apparently the exact fatness that it could be before it probably be too big because fits perfectly to these screws that I didn't think it was going to be able to get to. But at the same time, like I said, I don't think it probably could be much bigger or else it probably would start having problems because it's already pretty close. Now the screws I'm taking apart now separate the end of the drill from the motor. I'm not a hundred percent on this. This is pure guess. Again, this is just from experience of taking other things apart and knowing, okay, so here's what I've got. Now there's it's probably not just going to slide apart due to the fact that there's still a motor connecting them and stuff like that. But I'm also thinking that this screw, that's down, these two down here, probably just end up having to take all these plastic screws out. I mean, not that I really expected that somehow I was going to take it apart without taking them out, but I didn't know if maybe it would come out in like in chunks in the sense of if I stuck this one chunk and unscrewed it first, if it, if it would break apart in the sense where it, it could have just gotten it easier, but it is not seeming to be the case. So we'll just quickly knock these screws out being as they're the easiest and they're just a Phillips head screwdriver, which, you know, I don't, being a person who works in construction and deals with screws all the time, I have to simply say that whoever was the man who invented the flathead screwdriver is a fucking idiot does not understand how life works because flathead screwdrivers are the bane of any carpenter's existence. And then you got a Phillips that holds in place and unscrews everything that needs to. And it's just like, why would you ever in your life even invent a flathead screwdriver? Like flatheads are pointless. Now, I do believe there are two screws left, but the problem is, is they're both really deep and they hold the bottom of the drill together where like the battery pack would connect to the drill. It is so far in there that my screwdriver is way too fat to even get to it. So it's gonna hold the bottom of the drill together. But this top part, not only is it already trying to pop apart, this top part should be able to be pride and or manipulated enough where I don't think it will be too much of an issue having that bottom piece stay screwed together. Plus everything I want from this drill is, um, is the motor and the drill set end of itself, the electronics. So any form of motherboard circuitry or the trigger and you know, and then I guess if there's any form of control wire for the oh wow, that just fucking unsoldered itself right there. Red power wire just was like, yep, we ain't we ain't staying, bro. Nope, that one didn't stay either. So well, this one's positive. So let's. 
take my red marker here. Hopefully it still works. It's actually a dry erase marker, but it's still red nonetheless. I'm just gonna kind of paintingly mark this connector over here with the red color to as to in the future when I go work on this. If I pick this motor up and wonder which one of these end connectors was the positive, I'll know that the red was the positive connector. So as you can see, this is simply a motor. It's just an electric motor that's running the drill. Now it's a high performance electric motor. And even though it's got a whole bunch of bullshit with the end of this, where the, how you have the whole drill set up, if you take all of this apart, <laughs> there's um, gear systems in here because that's how you can change the speed of the drill by rotating the headpiece on the top to like a different number, you would get a different drill speed. And that same difference of, it's like a mini transmission. Oh my God, I twisted. Oh no. Well, that was a bad thing. Well, actually, you yeah. know, it was a bad and not a not so bad thing. So I pulled and it came right apart. Problem is, is when it came apart, some of the bearings fell out, which sucks. But here's the thing. One, the motor is just a little drive gear, as you can see right there, right? Gets the voltage, 20 volts to it. It spins that, that head. This piece that came out next, this is the transmission. This is what I was talking about. So this is, um, I'll, I'll need to acquire the other pieces. And the other pieces are where the bearings came out of. So it's one of those things where hopefully we didn't need those. Because um, if we did, we don't have them. But that gear on the front of that sits inside of that. You can see there's three gears in there. If you flip it around here, you can see there's four gears in there. Each one of these gears rotate, rotatingly spins, spinning this center shaft in here that's full of bearings that I don't want to lose if I have to possibly keep them. And um, and then henceforth, you get your different speed as you turn the dial to a different number. But if you're smart enough to figure it out, you can hook one of these motors up to an RC car, which I happen to have an RC car that I'm willing to uh, to upgrade because These were super popular at one point on the internet. And I went online and found a pair of them that were opened, brand new, but opened, um, like an opened new item from Walmart that were 25 a piece instead of the $100 a piece they were normally. Purchased them so me and my buddy can play with them. Unfortunately, one of them came, um, kind of broken already but this is the was the still good one I customized it by removing the top rack um there's a camera right here in the front so it's an rc um a virtual reality rc truck it's it's all wheel drive so each one of these wheels is driven by a motor independent suspension in the sense of it bounces it can rotate in every direction each wheel has got its own separate suspension on top of uh it's got this much travel up and down it's a really slow thing like it's not a jeep that goes fast but it's a slow moving thing but very few things that can't just climb itself over it actually runs on a 9.6 volt um lithium ion battery uh and it's uh yeah, so it's all-wheel drive. It's got a super suspension. And then once you hook the camera up to your phone, you put like a, you know, one of those virtual reality visors on, and it allows you to drive the RC truck like you were actually in it, driving it. Um, I've never truly used it for that point. I've used it, the camera to record action shots, but the camera is really shitty being as it's just a remote control car. And um, so I haven't used that much, but I've definitely flexed the shit out of this thing made it really cool. Um, I already have one upgrade for it, which was I had a toy tractor that I had throughout the years of my life that 
sat back here in the garage and unfortunately got destroyed. But in the midst of it getting destroyed, I took the wheels off of it. They are dirty and covered in cobwebs, as you can tell. But um, this is one of them I found it recently. The shaft input is the exact same shaft input that's on this RC truck I have now. The tires themselves are about the same size and height. But as you can see from the comparison, I'll use the front tire so you can actually see. Whereas they are almost the same height, this one is much skinnier. And whereas this one, it looks like a rubber tire, but there's no actual air in them. So they're very pushy. So if you actually go to climb like any form of rocks with the RC truck, it struggles because the tires don't actually provide grip. And those tractor tires I have that are skinnier are solid plastic tractor tires and being as they're skinnier they're ac they'll actually provide even better traction being treaded and smaller than being bigger with less tread and no air in them to actually keep them in place so i'm going to upgrade the tires itself but um what this next thing i'm thinking of would be obviously the hardest step but it would be the coolest would be take that drill apart maybe take apart this other drill i have just get me a couple of drill motors out and upgrade the motors inside the truck. So instead of them being the crappy little toy motors they put into the truck when you buy it, I can upgrade them and put these, these big ass motors in there and have this thing run off of 20 volts instead of the 9.6 that's in it. And, uh, and really lighten up the power um that this thing would have to be able to climb and go through stuff on top of all of that to make it better i had a my grandfather had an rc car that sat in his house the entire time he was alive somebody bought it for him because you know being an old man he had a dream car for a i don't know if this thing actually has a name on it anywhere and i'm sure as soon as i pick it up somebody's gonna know exactly what car it is but it's like a Chevy something, but it's a drop top, and you wanted it in red, and you'd always wanted one. Um, so, yeah, because all this thing, all it says is Chevrolet. It doesn't have any emblems on it, and I think they do that for, like, just the reason of they don't want to get sued by a company, by Chevrolet, for making the exact model of their big car or whatever, but... Um, so you always wanted one of these, and, and so for, like, a bunch of Christmases and birthdays for years on end. My grand, when anybody would ask my grandpa what he wanted for Christmas, he would tell him he wanted this specific car. And obviously, no one ever bought him for it because I mean, it's even on getting a crappy version of these cars are expensive as fuck. So eventually, one year, my dad or somebody went out and bought my grandpa the car that he wanted, but it's just it was the RC version of it, and this is the the Chevy drop top car my grandpa had i still have the rest of the car but um the battery pack was broken for this car and uh i uh i figured the car would probably be faster anyways this is actually this car itself was actually expensive because it's a very fast rc car um so we uh so when i got it when my grandpa passed away i got a hold of it i tried driving around but the battery pack was broken so the battery wouldn't stay connected and it would keep losing power so i took the top of it off to get to the battery pack to fix it and i know what i gotta do but i have yet to actually fix it so it's just sitting there and i had this body laying around and one day i was looking at this jeep and i was like oh man you know the way that this thing's mounted to this 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 frame is mounted to this body is like the exact same it took these two and it stuck this like this as like a you know just to see what it kind of would look like having this body instead of this body and i think that looks awesome having this old chevy car but I have this big old off-road body with these big old tires where it can flex and, and have awesomeness to it and I, I literally learned that it's because it's the same. This body that's on here has got the exact same body mount that this one did. So I literally am going to take this body off, put this body onto it on top of upgrading the engines and the batteries for it and turn this cheap video recorded off-road all-wheel drive 4x4 
um, RC car and turn it into an actual legitimate badass looking off-road RC car. Um, and so obviously that's why I need the batteries, but or the batteries and the electronics. And then obviously the best part of all of it is I still need the wires and the electronics out of the inside of this um, um, handle itself. But once I'm done with this, the plastic for this will just get thrown away because I don't need it anymore. And then I will have condensed a larger item that's sitting around taking up space in my house. And I will have broken it down and either used the parts I, uh, for what I need them for, or I will have separatingly put them into a box somewhere being like, look, this is all old taken apart drills. So in the future, when I decide, hey, I want to build something and I need that this kind of motor or this kind of setup, I've already got it pre-taken apart and ready to go organized and taking instead of taking up a bunch of space in my garage, now it's just sitting in a box with all the others of its kind instead of just like I said, instead of just having a bunch of random old drills that don't really work or don't have a real purpose anymore. So just having them sitting all up there, I can get them all break and broke apart, organized into a box and ready to go for when they want to be worked on or when I want to work on them. I uh, lost my stick. No, I'm not smoking another cigarette. I, I realized that I had just literally smoked one, but I'm looking at the fact that I have five cigarettes left. It is currently 20 minutes till 11. I'm going to have to go inside to obtain another beverage because there's no way I'm going to be asleep soon enough where I wouldn't have to worry about another drink. So I'm going to be drinking one of the last three pops I have, which means I'm going to have only like two pops left. It's really suck. Um, but, you know, we'll, we'll see if maybe tomorrow when I'm out and about getting cigarettes, if I can't possibly suck up and spend the five extra dollars and buy myself a case of Mountain Dew. Hopefully, not drink at all within a couple days because I can and do do that a lot. But uh, instead, maybe actually drink it more sparingly. But I am going to go. I know it's a sad thing. We're just a shy short of two hours, which is fine with me. Um, I, like I said, I'm trying to get things done with watching what I want to watch and stuff like that while I'm out here. And get my duck up and go to the potty and, and stuff like that. Um, before it's too late, because like I said, I'm trying to go, been force myself to go to bed earlier and get up earlier. So like, you know, with having both of that going on, I'm, my hours are, are a little bit flunky. And even though that's not going to use that excuse every night, I'm still going to be, don't be much appreciated. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing to keep up with cool content like this. We are now back to 22 subscribers away from 500 because apparently somebody decided to subscribe so instead of only being 21 away and being super stoked and excited for being that much closer to to our awesome 500 subscriber video we instead we reverted now we're 22 subscribers away but still close we'll get there i'm excited hopefully you guys are too i'll see you guys all tomorrow in tomorrow night's chat. I'm sorry to my chat that I wasn't very vocal with you guys and I just kind of did my own thing while working on my own stuff. But like I said, uh, we'll be back tomorrow with full energy and, and full readiness to make something more entertaining than than the destructionary though I made for you tonight of me taking things apart and all that fun stuff. But we out here. We will live in our best lives. Hopefully, you're all living your best lives. I want you all to remember, stay sexy and don't get murdered out there. I'll see you later. Goodbye.